Hey, my name is Mike. I'm a developer from Philadelphia. And in this video, I want to talk to you about debugging your code. Now, as you go along in your programming, inevitably, you're going to get to a point where you run into little errors or little inconsistencies, or what we like to call bugs in your program. And so how do you go about addressing these? How do you go about fixing bugs in the best way possible? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks for fixing bugs, and I'll give you some different strategies you can use to address different types of bugs. So without further ado, let's get into the video and we'll get started learning how to debug your program. And so today we'll cover print statements, error handling, commenting things out, debugging tools, tests, and asking other developers. And all of these are great techniques and strategies as we attempt to debug our code. So let's talk about how to debug your code. And we'll start with print statements. So the simplest way to tell what's going on in a program is to have the computer tell you itself. For many bugs, a print statement is an easy way to see what's going on in the program, what data is being used, or whether or not a function is being called correctly. Print statements are also available in just about every programming language, and generally, their output is able to be formatted in useful ways. This means that they can be used as a reliable debugging tool in just about any environment. They don't rely on any one specific debugging interface, platform, or IDE. And many developers will use print statements as an initial method for debugging a piece of code. And in many cases, just seeing the value of a variable or the result of a function call printed out can point to the problem. Nowadays, many programming environments will increase the power of print statements by giving developers useful interfaces for searching through complex data structures like objects or lists. Google Chrome, for example, is known for its great debugging interface. Uh, when you print out an object in JavaScript, it will display the object in a nestable and searchable structure. The next way to debug your code would be error handling. Now, many programming languages provide a way of catching common errors in programs. So if a program throws an error, instead of crashing, it will be caught, and then some code can be executed which responds to the error. Now these try-catch blocks, as they're often called, are an invaluable resource for finding a bug. If your program keeps crashing at a particular spot, try surrounding that code with try-catch blocks and investigating the error object that gets returned. Now, try catch blocks are especially useful for catching errors that don't occur very often. You can let the program run and only be notified when it actually breaks. And these structures are also useful for logging bugs and problems in a production environment. Many applications will add the error log caught by a try catch to a database along with the relevant state of the application. And then these logs can be looked over later to identify common bugs. The third way of debugging your program would be commenting things out. And this is one of my favorite debugging methods, which is commenting out code that you think might be a problem. So if you know a bug is in a block of code you're working with, but you're not sure which line or which part, it can be helpful to comment out the entire block and then start adding lines of code back in one by one until the bug resurfaces. Now, I use this technique a lot when working on websites. If there's a part of the website code which seems to be breaking, I'll comment it all out and then slowly add pieces back in until I find the culprit. And this is most useful when you've identified the general area where a bug lives, but you're not sure exactly what's causing it. Now, the fourth way of debugging your code is by using debugging tools, and it's by far the most sophisticated method that we're going to talk about. Now, a lot of these debugging tools are provided by your integrated development environment, your text editor, or a web browser like Chrome or Firefox. Now, debugging tools like this allow developers to add breaks to places in their code. They can then run their code in a debugging mode, and the program will stop when it hits the break. Developers can then step through their programs line by line, examining the values of all variables, the inputs to functions, and the code that's getting executed. Different IDEs and environments have different debugging tools, but generally they all do pretty much the same thing. When something like a print statement doesn't do the trick, it's often necessary to dive into the code and really take advantage of tools like this. And debugging in this way is super effective, but can have a bit of a learning curve associated to it. So it's useful to practice whenever possible. The next way to catch bugs and to debug your programs is through tests. And this is a more passive way of spotting and fixing bugs in the code base. Oftentimes developers will unknowingly create new bugs in a program as a side effect of making changes or adding new features. In many cases, pre-existing tests can pick up on these new bugs and indicate that something is wrong. Now, in my opinion, a good suite of tests is the absolute best way to debug a program on a large scale because it helps catch bugs as they're created. 
And the last technique for debugging your programs is simply just to ask other developers. When all else fails, it's good to ask another developer for help. And oftentimes, when trying to debug something for a while, you can get too close to the problem or you can go down a wrong road. And getting a second pair of eyes on the project can bring a fresh new perspective and help resolve tricky bugs quicker. It's important to realize that, especially on a professional development team, it's better to bring someone else in to help fix something than to waste hours of time by looking for the answer yourself. Two heads are often better than one, and the last thing you wanna do is waste time on a silly bug. So there you go, those are some common ways of debugging your code. Whenever you have a tricky bug that's messing things up, you can try print statements, you can try error handling, commenting things out, look into your debugging tools, run some tests, or ask other developers for help. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe to this channel, leave a like, or drop a comment below. And if you're ready to take your skills to the next level, you can start learning at Codecademy today.